Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Vimeo Station. What's up, guys? Your competitive Wi-Fi band and conductor, PK Sparks, the pinnacle of Mario P's, is here again on Monday with another competitive Wi-Fi battle for you. Let's be honest here. Who else has a longer intro for Lumio Station than I? Let's be real here. Oh my God! Let's, let's say it again. Let's say it again for Gusto. Yeah. What's up, guys? Peak. Oh, I, I messed it up. Wow. Anyway. What you got, like I said last week, today's battle is going to be using the same team. However, I'm going up against another Twitter user by the name of C underscore Los95. So, C Los95, I am battling off of Twitter. If you guys are not following me on Twitter, go follow me on Twitter. Nine times out of ten, I go to you guys for, your, for, for battles. So, if you guys want a chance to get up on Mondays, do so by going up by following me on Twitter and just waiting for me to tweet out whenever I'm looking for a battle. I do so at least once a week. So, definitely get your picks. So get your opportunity to go follow me on Twitter right now. So right now, like I said, we were going up against Carlos. I was really worried about his team. Just looking at it, I'm like, okay, first of all, I don't have a power. I don't have a check for the Azuma room. My best bet is charged on Y, and he's not going to take kindly to a waterfall, even with Sun up. He's definitely not going to uh, take kindly to a uh, play rough, even with the Sun. I mean, it's just it's going to hurt. It's definitely going to hurt. With the Agi Slash, which is kind of popular, I assume this will be Weakness Policy. It was either Weakness Policy or Air Balloon. And if his Heat Train and Air Balloon, Air Balloon, now I was pretty sure his Weakness Policy would be on Agi Slash or vice versa. It doesn't matter, but I was really worried. As you guys can see, he also brought the same Corazai with uh, Tyranitar and um, Charizard. Now, I assume that his Charizard would be X, just because looking at his team, I'm like, maybe he's also not running Dual Weather. Now, see, for my team, it's pretty obvious that I'm running Y, just because I have Garchomp on here as well, but I would want two Dragon types. However, it's not so obvious for him, because he already doesn't have a Dragon type. So, I ran off the assumption that there was Charizard X, and you're going to see later on in the battle whether it is Charizard X or not. However, his team is really OU standard. He had a really strong counter to just fairy types, but luckily I am not packing a fairy type in his team, so I was able to uh, ignore that. However, it is still an uphill battle, and it comes down to the wire. What team pulls off the uh, victory? What weather ends up being on top at the end of the battle? Is his Charizard and his Tyranitar better than my Charizard and Tyranitar? Would my, will my Aqua Jet, Aqua Jet from my Cardinal be able to take out the power of a huge power Azumarill? Will the bird from my spirit to counter the bird from his voting wash? Can I sit up with my Alakazam before he sets up with his Agi Slash? There's only one way to find out. There are too many factors in the battle, too many ways it could go, and there's only one winner. Let's find out who. With King Ramses, the Tyranitar in Washington, the Rotom Wash. Now, I was not worried about um, a bird on my Tyranitar. When I looked at his team, my major worry was getting rocks up. I knew I was going to need it because it was going to be an uphill battle, like I said at the very beginning. So, I get the Toxic off because I know that I can live on Hydro Pump, and I really want to take this opportunity to um, weaken this, this Rotom Wash as much as I can, as fast as I can, because I don't know what else I'm going to do about it. Because Rotom Wash can easily switch out from a Solar Beam with Charles or Y. This is the simplest snap of your finger, so it's not something I really want to uh, risk right now. So I get the toxic off on the Voter Wash, and now I'm able to see if it is a um, if it has leftovers or if it's Resto Chesto. If it's Resto Chesto, then I could possibly work around it, but it's going to be uphill battle. So you see that he went for the Hydro Pump, and his Hydro Pump didn't miss, and that was really lucky for me because I was able to get the rocks up with no residual damage besides the burn. So because my I am even though I'm a mixed Tyranitar, I am packing um, Fire Blast. Fire Blast is not going to do much to a Voter Wash because Voter Wash is a water type, so you know weakness and all that bull crap hunky dory so um with that said I am forced to only go for crush which is my most offensive move against this one wash assuming that it's bulky or not so um you see that his voter wash actually missed hydro pump again and that is really lucky because I, I mean I needed it right now I needed it like I said it's gonna be uphill battle so I saw that and I feel bad because missing it twice in a row with only 50% accuracy that is really unlucky so I apologize um Carlos for that but I mean, it's Pokemon, what you gonna do? Sometimes the RNG just is not in your favor. So with that said, um, excuse me, but with that said, the Voter Wash is taking a lot of damage here and from the Crunch and the Toxic. It is really looking good in my favor. I don't want to switch out here because I don't, I just 
don't want to give him any leeway. I just want to keep attacking. I go for the crunch. He switches out into his Agi Slash. And when I didn't see the air balloon, when I saw the switch, when he knew I'm going for crunch, knowing that his Agi Slash can take a crunch, I'm like, oh crap, it's weakness policy. Houston, we have a problem. So now I gotta deal with this thing. I don't know how I'm gonna do it because the King Shield, the possibility of him having King Shield, the possibility of him also having Swords Dance. I don't really know what this thing is going to do yet. It is not looking good in my favor, but a Witness Policy Boosted Agi Slash is a very scary Agi Slash. So with that said, my back is up against the wall. I don't really need Ramsey's, like I said, after looking at his team. I go for the Fire Blast, assuming he might just go for the Crunch, even though, I'm sorry, he assuming he might go for King Shield, even though I already got the, um, the, def I got the defense drop and Crunch would have done more damage, I, I didn't really want to risk it. I really did not want to risk um, him like, going for King Shield because then it would have been a waste of turn. So at least with Fire Blast, I, I guarantee damage off. He goes to the second sword and is able to one shot my Tyranitar because the Time Sword Super Time Sword Super Effective with a weakness policy boost is going to kill me. So he goes into Fang. I'm, I'm sorry, I go out into Fang, the Guard Chop. He goes into um, his defense form by using King Shield. Now I assume that he's going to use King Shield or not, so I believe that I just went for uh, Earthquake because what else would you ever do against it? I really didn't want to risk setting up a sword thing because I just don't want to risk it. So I assume he might switch out here as wanting to save his Ash Ashes later, but then in hindsight, I'm like, why would he want to switch out here when he always set up his stealth box? His, I'm sorry, not his stealth box, his uh, weakness policy. He's going to stay in here and do as much damage as possible. So that was my folly, that was my mistake. I should have went for Earthquake. Earthquake definitely will check out the Ash Ashes, and it really did cost me big damage on my Fang. However, um, the residual damage thing to Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin is another to get the Agile Slash, and that is a dead Agile Slash. One threat averted, but many threats more to come. One right here is this a Doomerill. Because I figured that, okay, if he goes to Aqua Jet, first of all, he's going to have to go to Aqua Jet to, do any, um, to kill my uh, Guard Chomp. Um, otherwise, uh, to do damage to my Guard Chomp. Otherwise, I can hit him with an Earthquake and at least do big damage to it. So, th this was assuming that my family was at full health. However, I made that misplay last turn, which cost my guard chop. However, the Azumarill is now sitting pretty, well, isn't sitting pretty at 50% health. He is going to switch out here while I go out into my Charizard, and I knew he was going to switch out here, but I really wanted to get that Mega Evolution up. And worst case scenario, even if he didn't switch out here, then um, he's going to have like, the Azumarill in his hands. Now, obviously, the smart player wouldn't have done that, and Carlos did not make that play at all. So, since I was Heat Trim, which is going to deliciously devour my Solar Beam, no matter how strong it may be, times for resistant from a, um, it's just not going to do it. No stab. It's not going to do much. Especially when Heat Train is 9 times out of 10 is uh, especially bulky. And even if it isn't especially bulky, then it's just monstrous otherwise. So it's it's not going to do much at all. Like, you got, it did like what? 5? Not even 5 percent? However, I am able to pop the air blue on the Heat Train, so that is very good. However, uh, my Earthquaker Guard Chomp is gone, so that was a mute point. I am going to switch out here to the Pokemon that I'm willing to sacrifice the most, and there's my Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill is. Um, it's relaxed nature, so max HP, max defense, will wisdom and all that nate all that stuff. So he go he goes to Toxic, I guess assuming I was gonna switch out here, because I Charizard can't do anything to the um uh, Heatran. I mean he can do a little bit with the air slash, but it's not enough to be effective. So right now he goes on to the heat tran the heat tran poison me. He goes to for goes for lava plume and because I'm not special bulky, he's gonna do big damage to my Buffalo Bill. However, I am packing the citrus berry, so it is going to recover my HP just a little bit. I go for Dark Pulse just to get some damage off of this thing, and then I'm like, okay. Maybe I can live one more lava plume. Maybe I can live one more lava plume. So this turn, I decided to go for pain spin because that's going to do the most damage to the Heatran, especially seeing as how much little Dark Pulse did. From the lava plume, I was able to live with two HP left, which is so lucky for me because I definitely needed that. That does a huge chunk of damage. So pain spin does a huge chunk of damage to the Heatran and also burns another turn of sun, which he is definitely using to his advantage with lava plume. So with, with the lava plume up, um, I'm sorry. With um, he goes to lava one more time and takes out Buffalo Bill and the Dead Spirit Tomb. However. Buffalo Bill was, was around long enough to install out all the turns from Sun, and now there's a slightly weakened Heatran. So I figured at this point, I'm going to send out my Smitty number one. Smitty number one has Dragon Dance and is also packing Lumberry. If you went for Willow Wisp, then he might miss, and I can set up Dragon Dance. And if he doesn't, then well, I'm just going to hurt him. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to. I'm, I mean, if he doesn't, then he's not going to do much to me, and you know, I'll be able, I'll, it'll still be a free setup. So I go for the Dragon Dance here, he goes out into his Rotom Wash, I'm like, okay, he goes into Rotom Wash, Rotom Wash is already half done. This is Adamant Adaptability Dragon Dance Boosted Guard Chomp using a, I'm sorry, not Guard Chomp, wow, Cardart using a Crunch. It is going to utterly decimate this already weakened Rotom Wash. And um, I was assuming that maybe he, maybe he assumed that I assumed that he might, I don't know, I don't know. But I really didn't want to risk him going for um, Will-O-Wisp, so I just went for Crunch and that is going to take out the, um, the one to watch. Now right here, this is one point where I was actually shocked and is the reason why I don't think I'm going to be running Cardart 
and OU anymore. Charizard comes out and Mega Evolves. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to hit him with a crunch because he already took damage from Stealth Rock. He's 50% down. Uh, crunch is going to destroy this thing. However, Charizard outspeeds. Timid Charizard outspeeds a Dragon Dance boosted Cardinal by 7 points. That is not good enough. No matter how much power Cardinal may, may have, it, it was just bad. I went from Crunch to Assure the knockout because, I mean, um, I didn't know how much damage would have done and Crunch definitely would have taken it out. So, um, I went for Crunch and Sure never was no proper play. So, I sent out my Alakazam who, like I said last week, um, I'm recording these battles on the same day so I haven't renamed it. But the, time you ne the next time you see Alakazam, he should be re-nicknamed Malkavar from Fairy Tale. So, with that said, the Psychic is going to take out the Charizard Y and he sends out his Tyranitar. Now, right here, I made a mistake and I should have switched out here because I could have used my Alakazam a little bit more against his team than I could um, Charizard Y. But I decided to go for Dazzling Gleam. Even though I am timid, life force boosted, and I get a critical hit, it still does not one shot the Tyranitar. And he goes for Crunch, and you know, Alakazam does not have the best defense. Stat that is going to one shot Alakazam, and that is a dead psychic type right there on my hands. So, right now, it is Ivo versus the world, just like it was in Avatar The Last Airbender. I enjoyed the White Lotus, and now I hope that I can harness the power of the sun from the from was it from Souza's Comet to take out my opponent's team. So, he goes in the heat ran, and I didn't want to run a risk. Risk him doing anything else. I wanted to get damage off in case he decided to stay in with his Tyranitar. But this, you know, trying to out predict here because I figured if he still if he stays in, I mean, if he goes out in the heat train, then maybe I could take him out from a damage he already had with Air Slash. I go for Solar Beam and it does a very little damage, but it does take him down to the red health. And with that said, I am going to go for Air Slash. It's my it's my best bet, even though it's resistant. It is still stab and powerful and not times four resistant. And it's going to be enough to take out the heat train and that is one threat out the way. It is still an uphill battle. He goes out into the Tyranitar and Tyranitar is going to get the special defense. His boost back thanks to his him his ability Sandstream, which boosts the special the special defense stat of rock types on the field. In case you don't know, I'm sure you do, but in case you don't. So anyway, I go for the um, the fire blast because it's my strongest move. And I really didn't want to risk air slash not killing. I did not know how bulky this out this time Antar could be. So with that side, you go for the fire blast. Look, I am lucky enough to not miss the fire blast, and I do take out the Tyranitar. It is now one Pokemon left, and this is the Azumaro. So I figured like if he goes to Aqua Jet, I just gotta hope I can live one because the sun is not up to weaken the Aquajet anymore. I don't know if he did not know if he knew that Aquajet wouldn't kill and went for waterfall or whatever. But I went for Air Slash because I couldn't go for Solar Beam. That is going to one shot the Azumaro, and that is going to be a good game, Carlos. One to zero. Ivo came in at the last second, and like I said, that was an uphill battle, but the Pokemon that I was most relying on, Charizard Y, was the Pokemon that got me the win. It was able to take out my, the last three Pokemon of my opponent. That was very good. Thank you, Carlos, for the battle. Um, I, I said this as well. I didn't say this last week, but I'm going to say it this week. Um, my opponent's Twitter accounts will always be linked in the description below, so definitely check that out. And, um... Go congratulate Carlos on a really good battle. He's definitely put up a good fight. And um, I was wary that I was going to lose. Honestly, I think that just because he missed a couple times with Hydro Pump is what gave me the win. I just got lucky in the beginning, and that really helped me out. Uh, but otherwise, good game. I want to thank you all for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys show by hitting that like button. Like I said, I am still in the progress of really getting into my battling mindset and delivering to you guys not only entertaining battles, but exciting Wi-Fi battles. Battles you can learn from, battles that have skill and strategy and te technical know-how and all that. So if you guys are enjoy, enjoy the video and can't wait to see more, make sure you guys show your support by hitting that like button. Check out all the other stops here on, the, on Lumio Station. I'll see you this Saturday for the continuation of Pokemon Platinum Randomizer Nuzlocke on the Prism Podcast, and as always, but you guys stop by my channel right now, I am decimating the, the entire YouTube community with Mario Kart 8, a playthrough, time trials, online races, and more, so check that out as well, otherwise, I want to thank you all for watching, stay hot guys, and I'll see you all next time.